Hello and welcome to the Quick Terrain Modeler Tutorials. In this video, the second in a two-part series, we will pick up our discussion of geospatial file types. In part one, we covered 3D file types, sources of data, and the most common file extensions. In part two, we will expand that discussion to 2D products, vector, and point data. We'll begin by explaining how QT Modeler handles 2D data, specifically textures. Textures, QT Modeler's term for an image, comes in four types. Orthorectified, orthographic, projective, and unregistered. These textures can be viewed alone in 2D mode or draped onto a 3D model and may or may not have the same resolution as the model they are draped over. Multiple textures can be draped onto a single 3D model and are limited only by your graphics card. QT Modeler uses OpenGL standards and internally handles the mechanics of rendering, resizing, and sampling for the selected textures. The most common file types include those listed here, but many other types, as listed in the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, or the GDAL, will also work. Note, textures also include most forms of military ground and aviation maps. Each texture is handled a little different in QT Modeler. Orthorectified textures are treated as flat maps, which directly map to the terrain model underneath. Orthographic textures are treated as photographs taken straight down, resulting in a flat projection. Satellite imagery is an example of an orthographic texture. Projective textures are treated as photos taken from a frame camera. Users must define the field of view, position, and orientation to properly overlay a projective texture. Oblique imagery is an example of a projective texture. Unregistered images have no registration at all and must be manually registered using QT Modeler's image registration tool. This is common if you scan a paper map or photo. There are several ways to open a texture depending on the texture type. First, you can simply select the import texture icon from the default or tactical toolbar, navigate to your directory containing your texture and select open. This assumes you know where your texture is stored and which texture is correct for your location. Textures can be loaded alone or draped over a loaded model. Shown here is a texture loaded in 2D mode. When a texture is loaded without a 3D model, you won't get the benefit of 3D analysis, but you will still be able to measure distances, convert locations between UTM, LatLong, and MGRS, create routes, synchronize with Google Earth, annotate scenes, export directly to PowerPoint, and many more functions. The second and primary method for loading textures is from the Texture Overlay Texture menu. Select the texture type, and then depending on the type selected, different tools will open. The same functionality is also available if you right-click on Textures in the Layer Tree. For orthographic textures, the Orthographic Projection Settings tool will open, from there, click on Select Image and navigate to your file and select Open. Make any adjustments needed in the tool window, then click OK to load the texture. For orthorectified textures, the Import Orthorectified Texture window will open. From there, you can choose Select Image if you know what image you want and where it is stored. Or if you have a 3D model already loaded, click on Find Image, which will open the GeoTIFF Image Search tool. From this window, you can search a specified directory or cache, and QT Modeler will find all textures that intersect your loaded model. Highlight the file you want and select Load Image. For projective textures, the Projective Settings input window will open. From there, you click on Select Image and navigate to your file and select Open. Adjustments can be made in the tool window if desired, as well as loading a QTV file or parameter file both of which are explained more in detail in the help files. Once adjustments are complete, select OK to load and close the window. For unregistered images, the Load Texture window will open, followed by the Image Registration tool window, and the image will be displayed on the model. From there, you can follow the help file directions to register the image. The last method for loading textures is from the Model Search tool. For this method, you must first have a 3D model loaded. Simply define your search and select 2D raster data followed by Find Image, select the file, and Load Image. 
Vector annotations are used for many things in QT Modeler, including marking up 3D scenes to document distances or areas or call attention to specific features. Vector annotation simply turns measurement lines, selection boxes and polygons, range rings, routes, contour lines, and bounding boxes, and more into a permanent 3D vector that can be displayed in a variety of ways. To convert an item to a vector, simply right-click on the item in the layer tree and select Create QT Vector and the type of vector. In addition to creating vectors, QT Modeler can also import and export a variety of vectors in formats including ASCII, ESRI, Google Earth, AutoCAD, GPS, and QT Modeler's internal format for saving vectors, the .QVC. Point files created in QT Modeler are referred to as markers and are saved as a .MRK file. They too can be imported and exported in a variety of formats, including a shape, a KML, and ASCII formats. Markers can be created in several ways, including the place marker icon, or holding the M key and left clicking in the 3D scene, or using the marker menus, either using create marker or create point. The import and export marker functions are also located on the marker menu. In part one of this two-part tutorial, we provided a brief overview of 3D data sources, file extensions, and uses for each type of 3D model. In part two, we provided a brief overview of 2D data, including texture, vector products, and point data. Be sure to check out our other tutorials on our website, and please contact us if you have any questions.